Okay, so in addition to checking the levels of nutrients and pH in your feeding solution that you mix, you're going to want to also open up your bucket and see what your plant is living in and what it's eating. And how you do that is, open up your bucket, like this, and you're going to want to place, gently place this netting pot into something like um, a spaghetti pot or, in my case, I'm using an empty igloo cooler. So this fits in here just right, sits right on top, I don't have to worry about it or anything, um, or damaging the roots, which is super important. So you don't ever want to lay this bucket on something flat and damage the roots at all. You kind of want to stay hands off as much as possible. So I'm going to check the, um, the balance in this bucket. I've got the pump running because it's simulating the environment that the roots are in right now. If I were to turn the pump off, all those nutrients would probably just settle onto the bottom of the bucket and I wouldn't get a true reading of what's going on in here. So we're turning on the conductivity pen and we're turning on the pH pen and let's see what's going on. So I can tell right away the pH has gone up a lot since I adjusted it uh, just a few days ago. That's uh, that's fine, that's normal. That's normal for it to happen that way. And it looks like the plant is consuming food because this, um, the PPMs have gone down also. So um, I know that it's uptaking nutrients. So that's a very good sign. So this guy needs uh, to have the pH adjusted down. And um, for everything I've read, you don't want to do that inside the bucket you want to create a separate solution and add it to the bucket or just change the entire bucket of water altogether. Why not? It's a fresh drink of water. So let's put this guy back in its home and move on to the next plant. This one I just put into the bucket a few days ago, so I'm not expecting tremendous growth. And it surprised me again because look at this growth. This is a lot from just uh, yesterday when we checked this. Look at all these roots. So I'm gonna put this into my igloo cooler so that it's safe and secure. And if you look closely, you can see in here um, the bubbles that are being formed by the, the stone that's in there. It's not your typical round stone, it's flat stone. And I prefer that over the round ones. I thought I'd give it a shot and I like it a lot. So the water is ready for me to test. So the, I'm getting fluctuations because of the, the bubbles in here. So I probably have to turn this off very, very briefly and check the, um, the levels without the pump running. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this very quickly before the particles have a chance to settle. also went up. Like I say, I like to keep it between uh, 5.5 and 6.5 or as close to that range as possible. So this solution is also going to have to be adjusted. The pH is going to have to be lowered and the nutrients are going to have to be up to it. Let's put this sweetie tomato plant in the bucket. This is also a sweetie by the way. And then this is the black crim tomato. Look at that root growth. That is beautiful. You might see some discoloration with some strands. As long as it's limited to just some strands, it's not really a concern. That's probably just the nutrients dyeing the color of the roots a little bit. Um, but if you were to give this a quick rinse under uh, properly pH water, you should always properly pH it, um, then you'll see that wash off and you'll have that beautiful white bone color root. So this is looking so beautiful, I'm very proud of this. And we'll test the water. This water is lower at 750, um, which means that this plant is actually uptaking 
um, more rapidly. Yeah, this, this tomato is uh, definitely consuming differently than the sweeties. So that's interesting. That be, that's gonna be a fun uh, progression to watch to see how it's different between the, the variations of tomatoes. So these were my indoor buckets. I wanted to show how uh, the, the two different kinds of buckets I got and to um, explain my preference in, in the buckets. So these two, if you notice, they have a tube going into the bucket. So this uh, tube never actually has to touch the water. It never should touch the water. So you can also see the water levels here, which is great. So I can just take this out and I can look and see. I can also see if the water has any, any like particles floating around in it and get a, a, a gauge of if I need to change it. So I can just see that right now and put it right back in. And let's put it in this way. You can watch the water go down. I love this bucket. I love these types of buckets. Now this one is uh, from Bebo Sun and I don't much care for it, but I didn't want to go and spend more money on another bucket that I already had. So. I don't like this one because there is no external um, tubing here for me to quickly see what's going on. And I also don't like the fact that the tubes, you have to, um, you know, insert them into the bucket. They touch water. They come in contact with water. You have to use an air stone of some kind, whether it's flat or circular. So I prefer these buckets. They require less equipment, less fuss. They're just generally easy to maintain. And then this is my the pumps, the type of pump that I use. I have this big four port one. I have a few of the smaller versions which just have one port and those are great. They don't make hardly, they hardly make any noise at all. 